Hello and welcome back to Suspended Animation. I am your host, Dennis Bethalkis, and this is iZombie. Season 5, Episode 9, The Fresh Princess. <laughs> um, yeah, we have the witty titles. So we, we know that the, uh, I think it's the B team that's actually writing this one right now. Uh, with a little bit of a mix of the A team in there for the titles and things like that. Again, not the best episode, but it moved a lot of the plot along again. And that's kind of what we want in this last season. We want stuff to be wrapped up here. And uh, I'm looking forward to see, you know, how they're going to wrap this thing up in, you know, by August. So, you know, we've got uh, one more month basically of this and that's it. Yeah. August 2nd is the last episode of iZombie. So with that said, spoiler alert, I am going to spoil the shit out of the episode. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Come on back. This will be a video and you can comment down below in the comment section. Thank you, Viking bitch. Um, I'm also going to normally I do this at the end of the video. I'm going to do it at the beginning of the videos from now on. If you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. You can hit the dislike button too. I just ask that you go down below in the comment section. Tell me what it is you don't like. Give me some constructive criticism. Uh, none of this, you know, oh, you suck or whatever like that. Yeah. Yeah. So does your mom. But, you know, uh, <laughs> see, that's a preemptive one right there that I, I threw out there. Um, you can also go to suspendedfanimation.com and find out what my schedule is going to be like for the week. I have that up all week. So, sorry, my dog's doing a little dance uh, around there on the carpet all of a sudden. That's what you just heard. And yes, she was actually excited about something. I have no idea what the hell it was. Anyway, on to iZombie. So we open up with uh, Liv's dad. He is actually uh, kicking Utopium. Uh, thanks to Liv. So Liv has given him the ultimatum. Basically, he's got to kick Utopium and he's doing that cold turkey. He's in day three. Uh, really kind of you know feeling the effects at this point. Major is still looking for Sloan, the general's daughter, and he's been following her on uh, Instagram. And uh, basically he's that's what he's doing. He's, he's checking her social media to find out where the hell she is because he hasn't seen her in three weeks and kind of needs to find find out where she is. And we see where she is because Dolly actually has her and uh, is starving her and her boyfriend in a porta potty. So they've got them both tied up in porta potties and strapped in. Some pretty shitty things going on at the moment. <clears throat> so Liv gets her next case, which is uh, a former beauty queen, Lori Beth Spano, who died 20 or not died. Excuse me. She went into a coma 20 years ago from getting rose hips put into her makeup, which she was uh, allergic to, severely allergic to, and actually put her into a coma. Well, she actually passed away. So now it's become a murder case. And the person that was actually uh, convicted of putting that rose hips in her makeup was a another beauty contestant pageant. And now she's saying, nah, -uh, I wasn't the one. I was forced to write that confession and I'm innocent. So of course, Clive and Liv need to look into it. And Liv needs to eat a uh, beauty pageant brain from the 90s. That's where we get this from. I have to admit, that was actually fairly clever. They did a, a good job of coming up with uh, how they could get 90s brain live, you know, going. And this this is actually more one of the more creative ways of doing it, I have to admit. So, um, in the meantime, Robbie comes in with a clue about Beanpole Bob's identity. And that uh, it may all go come down to some stuff that was uh, confiscated by the police and is in the evidence locker. So Clive and, and Robbie go down to the evidence locker. They get the box and the box is empty. Well, it turns out that the cop who checked it out was a dirty cop. He checked it out four years ago. He was working for um, a guy that we haven't seen, honestly, since uh, season three if i remember correctly i think it was the either the end of season two no it was the uh, end of season three that's correct and he was a mob boss is what he was so uh and peyton had put him away so he worked for that guy and, and uh and and they have to question him now they have to get him out of jail to question him at this point <laughs> Yeah, Liv in the meantime visits her dad to find him passed out on the floor because, uh, you know, he's going through withdrawals and all this stuff. And Major comes over with a uh, a brain tube and he you know, is getting back into, you know, the swing of things. 
and Liv decides that he's going to come stay with her while he detoxes off the Utopium. So she goes to go pack him a bag and she has a flash of um, what's going on there in the uh, a vision of Lori Beth going into another girl's room to use the makeup. She goes into Velma's room. Velma is the one that actually had been uh, convicted of all this, of what happened. And is in, you know, basically pending trial or getting ready to be penned trial for uh, Lori Beth's murder. I know it sounds like a soap opera. That's because it is. It's a soap opera with zombies is really what this is. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, Lori Ann's parents come in with tapes uh, of the pageant, and we find out that Lori Ann's mother recorded every single bit of it. She was always behind the camera, behind the scenes, all that kind of stuff, and never left supposedly behind the camera. Remember this for later because it actually comes back up. Uh, Ravi and Peyton, in the meantime, uh, bring in the uh, the mob boss guy, and uh, they want to question him about what was going on, what was in the box, and um, how did Mosier uh, work for them? What, what did he do? And uh, we find out that this guy actually had his goons kill Beanpole Bob, because Beanpole Bob was uh, taking over the drug market with his new utopium shit. And that was the reason why. And he had Mosier steal the Utopium because they want to make more of it, of course. And but someone had gotten there beforehand and switched out the bottles to just water. So they need to go and find out where that's coming from now at this point. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of things that are going on at the moment. Um, so Ravi and Peyton go down to the evidence locker again and find out that the other box of evidence that they're looking for was checked out by a very young-looking Donnie with hair and a fake ID, a fake doctor's ID at this point. And so they're going to go over to Don Donnie and find out what the hell's going on with this. Clive and Liv, in the meantime, interview Velma, and uh, she basically says, you know what, uh, I was poor, and uh, Lori Beth's parents were wealthy and all this stuff. I really needed the scholarship. She didn't. She had a lot of talent and everything, and she was going to win it. Uh, but I really need. She didn't realize how much I needed that scholarship. But I would never have killed her. And you know, she's basically telling her all this stuff. And of course, it's twenty years later, and all she wants to do is just get back to the farm. She still lives on the farm, and that's where she wants to stay. In the meantime, major questions Donnie about. Uh, he he takes a look at Sloane's. Uh, you know, social media again, her Instagram, and he notices that the sign has changed behind Sloan. Uh, of course, the scratching post is no longer called the scratching post, it's called Donnie's, of course. And um, he asked him when that was changed. He goes, Oh, about three weeks ago. He goes, Oh, that was about the time she fell off the map. Do you have any video footage of when she was here? And he goes, Yeah, she was here. I remember her. She was yelling and screaming and all that stuff with her friends. And they go and look up the uh, video footage, uh, him and Darcy. Darcy is now Donnie's girlfriend, and she's the one with the Freilich brain, by the way, who is, uh, they're living out all these different, uh, you know, uh, end of life kind of things. Bucket list items, if you will. And they find out that uh, this zombie girl that uh, Sloan and her boyfriend were hanging out with was possibly human. And this is when they actually have uh, an infrared camera. Uh, Blaine had an infrared camera put in where the dead enders came in. And they find out that the uh, zombie girl was actually a human posing as a zombie. She had a wig and most likely abducted her. Most likely abducted, abducted Sloan. Hey, Joker. And so uh, Major tells Donnie and Darcy, don't get involved in this. Don't try and track her down. I'll take care of this. And Donnie's like, all right, sure. And as soon as Major leaves, uh, Darcy's like, that sounds like a bucket list item that we need to do. Yeah, of course he's not going to stand down on this thing. So <laughs> Clive, in the meantime, questions another former pageant member. Uh, basically, they're, they're saying, you know, oh, I didn't do it. So-and-so did it. I didn't do it. Maybe so-and-so did it. All that kind of stuff. Hey, Penn Farm Girl. And uh, they say, well, maybe Megan was the one that did it. She was the one that was uh, uh, screwing around with some guy in Lori Beth's uh, dressing room at the time. That was probably the reason why the door was locked and why Lori Beth went into Velma's room instead to get the makeup. So the tainted makeup, if you will. 
And so, of course, they're going to move over to Megan at this point. Uh, Ravi goes to question Donnie about, uh, you know, the drugs, the utopium. And uh, he says, that's not me. He goes, I, you know, look at the droopy ear. That's my twin brother. That's Scotty. It's like, oh, fuck, really? There's more of them? And he looks exactly the same. And uh, yeah, so Scotty is the one that, that uh, took the utopium. Peyton, in the meantime, is taking care of Martin uh, over at uh, their house. And when Liv comes home and, um, you know, Martin's telling Peyton about how rough a job she has, you know, being interim mayor and all that stuff. And but he kind of commends her. And uh, Peyton is showing, uh, you know, Peyton is, is saying how much she loves live and living together and that, you know, humans and zombies can live together. They can make it work. And you see Martin is kind of softening up to this at this point. We know that he's got something big brewing at this point. We don't know exactly what it is other than he's got a whole bunch of fucking Romero zombies down in the basement of his house. And uh, he's probably going to unleash them at some point in time. We don't know how he's weaponizing them. But it looks like he might be changing his mind at this point. So we see little bits of it here and there throughout this episode. And in the meantime, Donnie uh, calls in, Donnie and Darcy call in Major at 3 a.m. to say, hey, uh, we got a big break in the case. And I remember that girl, we found her. And uh, Major's like, okay, where is she? Uh, well, she ran from us. And she was pulling like some Vin Diesel shit, like, you know, uh, Dwayne Johnson stuff, jumping over rooftops. And she went to jump over a rooftop. Well, she goes, it was kind of like, you know, The Rock Johnson. But um, she didn't quite make it and fell five stories to her death. And they have her body there. <laughs> and Major's like, fuck, really? Did you get anything out of her? And well, no, she started running beforehand. She goes, well, did you check her ID? Oh, you're really good at this. And so, of course, Major grabs uh, this girl's brain. We find out that uh, who she is, and he takes out her brain and feeds it to three soldiers so that they can get a flash of what the hell's going on. And so they can get a clue as to where Sloan is at at this point. In the meantime, Liv's mom comes by and with Evan, and Evan goes running straight to the bathroom to throw up and we find out that Evan uh, is still recovering from the meat cube blast, the explosion. And actually, uh, whatever happened to him in the meat cube blast is actually uh, spreading. And he's uh, got a terminal illness at this point. So he needs to go to Boston in order to recover. Uh, and of course, he needs to get out of the city and they won't let them have a pass to get out. So she wants Liv to get them out of the city via her coyotes. Uh, you met the rock in St. Louis. Nice. Um, and just then Martin comes out and Liv's mom is pissed that Martin is there. What are you doing with him here? And, you know, just yelling and screaming and all this stuff. And at this point, uh, Evan comes out of the bathroom and says, who in the hell is this? And that's when he finds out that Martin is his father. Surprise. Hey man, here's your father. <laughs> yeah. So some interesting shit. You know, and Liv decides that, uh, you know, she's going to help Evan and uh, her mom get out of the city. But, uh, you know, just stop judging what's going on right now. She's trying to, you know, to clean him up. She's basically trying to keep them all together at this point is what's going now. Ravi and Peyton, in the meantime, sneak into Donnie's parents' house into the basement because they're looking for Scotty's stash of utopium. And who do they run into but Blaine? Blaine's been sitting there in the dark waiting for them and goes, you know, uh, what are you doing here, man? This is my house. And they tell him what's going on. And they ask if they can look around. And Blaine's like, well, what the hell's in it for me? And Peyton's like, what the hell do you want? And he says, well, my car, you know, got impounded. Can I get that? She's like, sure. That'll be, you know, your payment. You get the car. And uh, he goes, oh, can I also get a handicap placard for it too? She's like, yeah, sure. What the hell? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I knew it was going to be, you know, when Blade was there, it was going to be very, very awkward. But it was even more awkward than I thought it was going to be Pen Farm Girl. I thought it was actually pretty damn funny. So they find the stash. Of course, Robbie finds it hidden in the vent because, of course, that's where all junkies hide their stashes in the vent. And, of course, all the bottles are empty. He used up everything. So, shit. There we go. So Martin, in the meantime, is finally kicking Utopium. 
and he's going to go home and uh, he and Liv have a little heart to heart talk. And he says, you know, how much he loves her and all that stuff. And what she's doing is really great. She calls him dad for the first time. And then he tells her, he goes, if there ever comes a time uh, when uh, they have to choose sides that uh, she'll let him help her. It's very kind of weird. You know, he says that. So, yeah, it's just a weird, weird thing. And in the meantime, Peyton finds out that uh, there was, you know, since the utopium is gone, but they know that Beanpole Bob got shot that night, but survived because there was no body. So obviously he was the first zombie. Uh, she went over the police records and said there was only one shooting for that night and they have the address. And then she tells Robbie, oh, and by the way, I got fired from being interim mayor. She goes, we knew it was coming because I licensed out, you know, the uh, Seattle needle. I, I, you know, basically sold off the name so that uh, we could get the sitcom running. And we knew that was going to bite us in the ass sooner or later. And he says, oh, so you mean that whole promise you made to Blaine doesn't even uh, isn't even valid? She goes, exactly. He goes, oh, I love you more and more, which is kind of awesome that she did that. <laughs> so Major gets a word of a clue, the vision of uh, a truck being dumped someplace down by the river. And uh, they go to go check that out. And in the meantime, Clive has interviewed Megan, the other witness or the other uh, suspect, if you will. And she's got an alibi. She uh, is also, she's a former correctional officer who was involved in a uh, prison riot and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, it's all backstory. So they're looking at the video of the pageant. And remember, uh, Lori Beth's mom said she films everything. She was always behind the camera. And we see Lori Beth's mom walking behind stage on camera. And uh, they theorize that she spiked Velma's makeup to get her out of the running not knowing that her daughter was going to go in and not knowing that her daughter had that allergy to this rose hip stuff. And uh, yeah, pretty much is the one that, that probably murdered her daughter at this point. And so they need to get a confession out of her. That's the way they need to do it. So uh, they bring in her parents, of course, uh, Lori Beth's parents, because they said, oh, we're going to get a confession out of Velma for all of this. And they bring Lori Beth's mom into the, uh, the room behind you know, the, uh, I guess you could say the viewing room. And as uh, we hear Velma's, you know, crying that, you know, she didn't do it. She didn't do it. We see the pageant play in the background. You see Lori Beth's mom walk behind stage. And that's when Lori Beth's mom breaks down and says, you know, I've been living with this all this time. You know, I was the one who did it. I feel horrible. All that stuff. Yeah, of course you feel horrible. You framed a fucking girl for 20 years. Let her live with it. And I don't know. That's fucking evil, man. That really is at that point. So we see that there's a uh, Piesta day that it's basically it's as weird as it sounds. It's basically pies and it's a it's a party of pies uh, that's happening in Seattle. And Dolly has brought the porta potties with her zombies in it uh, strapped outside the Piesta. And of course, she set up her own table as well and just waiting for the festivities to start. And as they do, she cuts the straps open on the uh, the porta potties and walks away and lets the now Romero's eyes zombies of Sloan and her boyfriend come out and uh, start eating people. Yeah. And in the meantime, Major and his troops are off. They found the truck. They're ne it's nearby. They hear the screams. They go over and they have to put down uh, zombie Sloan or Romero. Zombie Romero's uh, Sloan at this point and her boyfriend. Yeah. So now they're really fucked because uh, he had to kill the general's daughter because there's no way she was coming back from that. Yeah. So Liv's mom and Evan, we see her, uh, the, see them leaving Seattle and uh, they're going out with the coyote. And uh, oh, we see Liv get called into the morgue uh, because of everything that happened. She actually is, uh, she meets Major back at home and uh is kind of happy for him and whatnot and uh we see the then she sees what happened at Piesta on the tv and goes oh my god i'm sorry and that's when she gets the call to go into the morgue in the meantime ravi and peyton are outside beanpole bob's house and uh you know they you know they said okay we're not going in yet i, I just got called into the morgue is what ravi says we're going to wait until both of us are there and then we're both going to go in and that's when they see Liv leave Beanpole Bob's house. And they see Beanpole Bob, who is Liv's father, of course, who is the father of zombie kind because of the utopium that he created. 
And there we go. That's how we end it off is they are shocked like we all are. And uh, yeah, so you know what? This actually moves everything forward quite nicely. And hopefully we get some better episodes on the back end of this. Uh, just some more fun episodes. And then also just wrapping some stuff up because they really need to wrap a lot of stuff up at this point because we only have uh, next week they're off. So yes, July 4th. There is going to be nothing, of course, for iZombie or on my channel, too, because it's July 4th. You know, go out and blow some shit up. Exactly. Uh, maybe I'll catch up on July 4th. Yeah, Joe Gary, you kid. And uh, yeah, it's, I'm off on that day, too. And then it starts up again on July 11th. There we go. So we only have four more episodes, I believe, is what we've got. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yes, we only have four more episodes. I can count. See, that actually helps. Uh, Pen Farm Girl says, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Actually, the end moved it up a few notches. Yeah, the end did uh, move it up a few notches. They also uh, are getting better about the murder cases, too. You know, wrapping them up uh, with, a, with an actual ending instead of going, oh, yeah, by the way, this one did a... Yeah, it, it just really kind of... Like I said, the first two episodes were very weird. Episode four was also just weird. So I'm um, hoping that, uh, you know, we get a little more a game going on in the last four episodes. Do you hear that zombie uh, zombie writers? That's all we want. We just want a little bit of closure, uh, much like you guys did with, uh, I mean, season two and three were awesome. Season four, season four, the end of season four was awesome. That's all I'm asking for. I'm asking for that level. That's how you should go out. Uh, Veronica Mars, I think, has a trade. Yeah, Veronica Mars is coming back. Yes, Joker. On Hulu, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But again, not genre stuff, so I don't cover it really. Yeah, I I'm actually wasn't a fan of Veronica Mars either. Sorry. I know. A lot of people were. It just wasn't, wasn't anything for me. Charlie's Angels, on the other hand. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that either. The old Charlie's Angels, yes, but uh, this new re new new reboot, yeah, re reboot, yes. Pen Farm Girl, poor Major, having to put them down, put down the General's daughter, knowing it pretty much doomed them. It was pretty good, yeah, exactly. I agree with you, Pen Farm Girl. He, you could see it in his eyes. He was just like, "Fuck, we are so fucked." Yeah. Oh. Oh, um, the originals, of course, Joe Greer. It's uh, Farrah Fawcett, uh, Jackson, and... Um, oh, God, I can't remember her name. Yeah, the original lineup. So, Pen Farm Girl and the stupid Dead Ender woman has signed their death warrant. Yeah, Dolly. Dolly is the one that fucked everyone over. And you know this is all just going to set off uh, Martin, Liv's father. He's going to have to actually put his plan into action at some point which is going to make shit even worse at that point. Unless he has a change of heart because of Liv. We don't know. Kate Smith. Thank you, Pen Farm Girl. Yes, Kate Smith was the... That was a circle takes a square. <laughs> yeah. So... I'm going to finish out iZombie since there's only four episodes left, even if they have some, you know, shitty episodes. Uh, I, I tried Joe Greer. Jet is not for me. I tried watching it, and that first episode just put me to sleep. Uh, I, I was all, all, you know, I was going to go all in on it, and it just knocked me out. I haven't gone back to it. Jacqueline Smith. Yes, Jacqueline Smith, not Kate Smith. It was Kate Jackson, Jacqueline Smith. That's what it was. I I messed up too. So thank you, Pen Farm Girl. Hey, I'm half asleep as well. It's been a long day. Is it better than Good Omens? Um, <laughs> Jet? No, uh, I, I, I'm not going to be bothered watching the second episode of Jet. I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. So with that said, if you like what you see here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, 
Um, also, if you're still on the fence, you can take a look at the video. There's going to be a video up here that's actually taken from all the algorithms of everything you've been watching. And it's going to pluck it from my video library and place it up there just for you. Also up here, you're going to see the, uh, what video am I going to put up here? It's going to be for Legion, I believe. Excuse me, I'm going to put Legion up here again. And because it was actually a good video, and it's a great show. If you haven't been watching Legion, watch Legion. Tomorrow, I'm going to be doing Swamp Thing. Yes, Saturday is going to be Saturday Morning Blast Off, where I take this uh, genre news of the week, talk about that, and any of the genre stuff that you guys want to talk about. So, Monday is, of course, the aforementioned Legion. Wednesdays is Krypton. Krypton, yes. Krypton is actually pretty good. And, of course, what you're watching right now on Thursday is iZombie. But, of course, next Thursday, there is no iZombie because of 4th of July. What time for Blast Off, Joe Greer? If you go to suspendedfanimation.com, you will see it starts at 10.30 a.m. Yes. Thank you for that plug, actually, because that just leads me right into it. It's also, that whole schedule is up on my Facebook page, Suspended Animation. You can take a look for that, and that's where I post all the genre news for the week. As the week goes on, I post more and more stuff there. Go and take a look at it. It's actually got a lot of stuff. Those of you that are still on Facebook, I know some people have sworn off Facebook. That's fine. Uh, I also have a Twitter account. I have an Instagram. The Instagram is going to be blowing up during Comic-Con. That's where I'm going to be posting most of my pictures, uh, a little short stream of videos, that kind of thing. And uh, I also have a Patreon, and the Patreon doesn't have peers at the uh, tiers at the moment, but they will. I will be putting those up at some point in time once I get a few more things kind of dialed in. So, with that said, thank you. And yes, I agree with you, Pen Farm Girl. Swamp Thing has been awesome, it's been really good. I'm so, so disappointed that it was canceled. I mean, really. Uh, WB just has their head up their ass. And I know it wasn't WB, quite honestly. It was AT&T. AT&T just uh, looked at the overhead on it and was like, nope, we're not doing that anymore. Cut. Gone. $85 million on what? A guy in a swamp? That's never going to sell. Fucking idiots. I swear to God. All right. With that happy thought out of the way. <laughs> Take a look at the video, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you, Pen Farm Girl. Thank you, Joe Greer, for joining me tonight. And thank you if you made it to the end of this video for joining me. And I will see you tomorrow for Swamp Thing. And I will talk about that on Saturday, Pen Farm Girl. <laughs> and I'll see you later. Don't let the door hit your ass on the way out. Otherwise, you may wind up singing along to some 90s pop song girl because you ate some 90 teen pageant brain because you're a zombie which isn't good because you're stuck in seattle <laughs> good night everybody thanks